My name is Joanna Sohovich, and I'm with the Chamberlain Group. We're the world's largest manufacturer of garage door openers, telephone entry systems, and gate opening systems. I'm the CEO, uh, but my son likes to tell people that I'm in sales or I help the engineers because he's embarrassed by my job title. So one of the interesting points that came up during the panel around the intersection of IT and OT was around who owns the data. And numerous members of the panel had different perspectives about ownership. My preference is that it's a pricing discussion. And there's a difference between whether you just want to have access to the data, whether you just want to own an application, or whether you want exclusivity. And that needs to be a negotiation between the provider and the user. It's difficult to establish one process that would fit all companies. One of the things that we found as a traditional company that has manufactured durable devices for decades is that we still need some of our legacy processes, like a stage gate NPD process in order to develop the millions of hardware goods that we manufacture and ship. However, there are other processes, like an agile software development process, that we also need to get good at. And those skills are exactly the opposite of the traditional legacy manufacturing NPD processes. So in many ways, it's incumbent upon us to become bilingual and learn how to continue to keep the trains running on time while also being agile enough to develop software, maintain it, and update it on a continuous basis. Now, my company had that same problem when I arrived about two and a half years ago. The uh, legacy business felt that the IoT stuff was costly and it was a distraction and there was no way to make money off of it. And so what we ended up having to do is understand what sort of value are we creating for the end user, what need are we meeting for our customers, and then figure out how do we uh, extract and share in the value that we're creating. Once we understood what value we were creating and, and what sort of revenue model we could build around that value, it became a lot more accepted all the way up in the company, including the executive ranks. So in my view, a lot of companies experience pilot purgatory because they have a regular business that they're trying to run. And these new ideas that are sometimes two or, th or third horizon out are a distraction. At best, they're a threat to your legacy business at worst. And so the distraction is people just don't want to spend any time on it because they're too busy conducting their daily jobs. The threat is people don't want to disrupt themselves, the thing that they're nurturing and growing every single day. What we've done at Chamberlain Group is we've created an emerging business line of business. So it's outside of the regular business and that emerging business LOB has the charter to take a look at uh, Horizon 3 and Horizon 2 ideas, incubate them, decide whether they're viable or not and bring them to the point where they can be transferred to a legacy LOB or line of business once it's mature enough. Uh, but they do have the charter, they can disrupt our company if needed. The new technology that we talk about all the time in Chamberlain Group, given that we're the world's largest manufacturer of garage door openers, among other things, is autonomous vehicles and shared vehicles. We think all the time about uh, autonomous vehicles and shared vehicles create a shrinking customer base for garages or for residential garages. That would have been a huge problem two and a half years ago when we viewed ourselves simply as an access company or an access controls company. But now that we've broadened our vision to we give the power of access and knowledge, we really are able to look at what do these technology trends represent in terms of opportunity and how can we apply our technology to end users to create solutions around autonomous and shared vehicles. Uh, the entire event has been fun, but the thing that I enjoyed the most so far was sitting on the keynote panel discussing the intersection of IT versus OT. There were so many different perspectives around from manufacturers to consultants to technology leaders in other countries, and I think it really highlights the challenge of partnerships are going to be the biggest thing to obstruct or help that divide be bridged. And, and, and hearing everybody's differing perspectives uh, tells me that getting people together, all the different players together, to create one solution will probably be our biggest challenge.
If I had to describe the IoT world event in three words, I think it would be curiosity, energy, and growth.